The views and opinions expressed on the Chris Davis Show are solely those of the guests. Any claims and representations made in the program are the sole responsibility of the guests. Opinions expressed during the show are educational and informational in nature. These views and opinions expressed do not represent those of the Chris Davis Show, its hosts, by any network or platform on which the show is featured. In 1990, the documentary Paris is Burning exposed the world to the black queer subculture known as ballroom. Though it premiered over 30 years ago, it still remains a cult classic and a very important part of the black cultural experience. Freddie Pendarvis of the legendary House of Pendarvis was at the forefront of that experience and one of the stars of the popular documentary. Today he's here on The Chris David Show to share with us more on his life and the black cultural experience. Welcome, Freddie Pendavis. Yes. Hello. Well, thank you, Chris, so much. I mean, it's a pleasure to actually talk with my son, who's doing this. Um, it's just unbelievable for me, you know, because as I mean, I have very few children. <laughs> okay. And but you know, you know what I always tell you? I say you, you have know, a lot. Of, you you do have a lot of kids because there are a lot of people that you y'all look alike. I've said that to you before. I'll get to that later. I'm not, I'm not, we're not going to start off like that, but I've said that to you before, like just <laughs> in conversation and yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. how are you doing? Like, first of all, happy belated birthday. Like everybody, like, thank you so much. Nice. a happy belated birthday. How was your thank birthday? You. What'd you do? Oh, on my birthday? Let's go like this. I, um, I moved okay. out of New York and I have this apartment in Maryland. So, if I run on the terrace for a minute and I need a breath of air, you understand. Okay. But like, I needed to get out because so much of me was rooted in New York and so much of me connected in New York that if I went out, it was just too, you know, when you have too much of a good experience that it can never be a bad experience. I understand. So New York made mm -hmm. anything I do that experience. It was too good that it could never be bad. Oh, wow. So I had to leave. I had to, you know, expand, express mm -hmm. myself and breathe. I consider it breathing because um, you get spoiled in New York. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You do get so spoiled. Definitely. And so when you leave New York, you start to see things differently and you start to just understand life differently. And um, I left New York. This is my third time, fourth time. Mm -hmm. Among those. So Three, when five. was your first time? So your first time was to where? Chicago or no, Atlanta? No, the first time was Atlanta, right? Okay. For which I found a lover, had a life, and had this kind of life, but he fucked up. He got on drugs. He knew how I felt about drugs, and that was it. Boom. That was him. Chicago. Mm -hmm. I met somebody. If it wasn't for the fact that my mother had cancer, mm -hmm. he, would be, he would be your second father. <laughs> I Listen, y'all heard it. He said it. He said it. I was ready to settle down with that nigga and be like, look, Freddie Padovis is who? What? <laughs> and okay. that was it. Yo, I was ready to really chill with him. But my mother had, you know, she had cancer right. I, and, you know, nobody in the family was doing anything. So I said, okay, cool. Let me hop my ass in the car and at 110 miles an hour on the highway, I was gone. How were you doing? That's what I want to <laughs> know. Because you, you were telling me you had some stuff going on. And mm -hmm. I just, I just want to make sure that you're all right. So how, I, how is Freddie? How are you? I doing? am, I'm fine. Let's put like this. I'm 56, and no, I don't look it. I'm <laughs> fabulous. Hello, I'm 56, and I look fabulous. Okay, thank you. You need so, to give me. Look, I have my. Not giving, no, 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 no. I no, need no. your no, Korean no. skincare routine. No, 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 no. All no, no, 150 no. Like steps. A, that's the reason why you, my son, because I, you know, when we first met, I was getting ready to do something else to you. So as far as we're not going into that, so right. that's it. But right. you look good now. You look good. Thank you. Freddie, listen, I haven't. I, I, I let my good. beard grow. My beard is like extremely long. Mm -hmm. I, I just COVID happened. I was going to a barber, and. I want to say one of the like last weekends before everything shut down, mm -hmm. I had an appointment, but then I got sick and I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to anybody's barbershop. And then 
come to find out I had COVID. I was like, you know, like one of those early 2020 cases of COVID. And I was just like, you know what? I think I'm just going to grow my beard out. I've always wanted to. I don't have to go into an office. This is just something that, you know, I want to do. So whatever, you know, I, anyway, that, enough about me. I want you to tell me about young Skylar Barron. And I love that. Oh, you name. use my legal. Oh, you I, use my legal. Listen, I love that. That is just such a dope name. Like, I don't know who named you, where they got it from. Like, it's just, it, first of all, it's Unisex. I'm going to tell, tell you the whole story. Okay. And it's when just I so strong. You know what I'm saying? When I was originally, my mother okay. was getting ready to name me Freddie. Right? Oh, okay, okay. And it's funny because let me, let me tell you the whole story. Okay. All right. My mother's getting ready to name me Freddie. My great aunt. My grandmother's sister, mm -hmm. she had met this dude in Europe and she was getting ready to marry him. But her mother said, no, you're not. My daughter is not going to be over here. Da -da -da -da, you know, so for the third, too far away from me, if something go wrong with her, da -da -da, I, you know, I'm not going to yeah. have that. Yeah. So she came back to America. But when she was over in Europe, she was working for the UN. Okay. And she got a transfer to the Pentagon. So oh, okay. when nice. she came, she was a nurse prior, you know, in her teens, like early teens, 20 before she got this job. Mm -hmm. So she knew a nurse, the nurse in the hospital where my mother was. She said, no, that's not his name. His name is this. You know, and there was a name of the dude who, well, his first name and his title because he was a baron in Europe and his first name was Skylar. And as far as it goes, mm. that was it. It could be a real story. It could be a fake story, but it's the story that I got. Listen, okay. that's the story we're going to run with. You know? <laughs> that's the story I've been running with forever. Exactly. Yes. And that's a wonderful My story. Because, named me, and that was it. You I know? mean, because think about it. What, what, if this, what if you were to really find out, you know, the real story, all the nurse named you, then you'd be like, oh, well, that's not as great of a story as what my great aunt <laughs> what my mother so I, my great aunt my great aunt was my great aunt was that woman though was she, she was like excuse she was like everybody in the family kind of uh -huh. you know was like as long as she don't come we're good but then she pop up and they'd be like oh gosh, we have to make sure this and this and this and this and what was her this, name this right. your great aunt that, what was her, her name was lucille lucille lucille, lucille. Yes, Shout Lucille. out to great aunt Lucille. She sounds like a real uh, piece of work there. She sounds, sounds like a real <laughs> pistol. <laughs> a real pistol. Yeah. Well, was a pistol. Where did, you, was where a did pistol. you grow up, Freddie? I don't know. What borough are you from? I'm I'm actually, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, born in Manhattan. Kind of pretty much mostly raised, I would say, in Brooklyn. Okay. And, um, you know. Brooklyn stand up. Brooklyn stand up. You know, okay. I've stayed in the Bronx a couple of times. And, right. We all, and, have. Uh, <laughs> we all have. Yeah, we all have. Okay. Um, um, yeah, there's a kid, there's a dude in, in the Bronx that if he wasn't going through so much trouble, I would really like to get to know him. Lionel Soldier. Um, yo, shout out to you. Um, I hope things shout get out better. Shout out to Lionel. You know, um, yeah. he, lost, uh -huh. he lost, he lost, and I mean, like, death. His, I think his partner. I'm not too sure, and that's really taken a toll on him. So, shout yeah. out to him. Um, yeah, shout out to Lionel, man. Yeah. I'm we, gonna you're, be you're definitely in New York. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna be in New York this weekend. It's gonna be funny. Um, you know, a, another friend passed away every, and I have to, you know, go to his his, his um, ceremony. Mm -hmm. So that's it. See, because wow. most of my friends are leaving. Most of my friends ever since I was like 18, I say 19. 19, mm -hmm. so many of my friends be going and going and going and going and going. That's a thing with me. It's a theme. And being in New York, yeah. it's always, okay, when are you going to this funeral? Or when are you going to that funeral? So from the third and third. And I'm like, no, it's overwhelming. Yeah. So New York has kind of become also a city of death for me. Where, you know, I can't have friends because it's too kind of scary for me. I so I need to needed to leave also to get to heal me mm -hmm. because at this right. point, you know, um, friends are hard. Lovers are impossible. Mm. That's an impossibility for me because um, 
I don't think I'm ever going to be ready or built to be with someone in that. Don't say that yet, though. But don't, don't say that. You never know. I'm scared. I I'm scared. No, I, I now I'm that scared. I understand. I definitely understand the fear. I definitely yeah. understand that because but, but I think. See, oh, go ahead. But because see, I come from it at a different perspective. I come from it at a perspective of one, I'm older. Two, you know, um, does the person really want me, or are they after whatever money I can give? Um, right. Three, it's a thing of, you know, um, I can really care for you, mm -hmm. but if you don't have that type of respect and love for me, then I may not see it. And I may be so into who I'm into that it's detrimental for me. And at this point, I can't go through that. You're an Aquarius too. And you know, the thing about you all is, because I, I know a lot of Aquariuses or Aquarii, I don't know the plural, but, and I'm an Aquarius rising. So we're the ultimate loners. You know what I'm saying? Like you can be alone and be perfectly fine. I mean, you know, I think it is good to have some type of companionship. It is good to connect with people, but mm -hmm. you guys are, are, are people who just don't need it at all. Like no, right, right, you, right. you entertain yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you know how to entertain definitely. yourself. You know how to anyway. Yeah. So we, we could entertain going, ourselves but, in the sense of let's put it like this: we, we could be thought of in a um, in a psych ward. We could be in a psych ward, and as far as it goes, we could sit in one corner and mm -hmm. be totally fine and blank everybody yes. out yes. to the point where nobody will understand how you deal with it. And that's Aquarius. Yep. That is Aquarius. Yeah. I'm I, listen. I'm I'm not an Aquarius. I'm a, I'm actually a Capricorn, but my mm -hmm. rising. Is Aquarius, so I can completely relate to yeah. that. What I wanted to know too, though, so when you were growing up, um, mm -hmm. did you have siblings? You had brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah actually, I have two. Okay. And I I'm going to say this publicly. Uh oh. Because honestly, drum roll, y'all. <laughs> yes, drum roll. Right. Um, I have two siblings. Mm -hmm. One that I love and I care about, who has a daughter and a grandson. Okay. I love another one who tried to push me out of a moving car on the, uh, around the time of my mother's death, who in front of my grandmother and grandfather. So him, I hate with the burning passions of a son. So him, his wife, his mother, baby's mother, his son, I don't want to be bothered with. I hope I that blame you. we just Still, we never contact each other. As long as I live and breathe, I will not say his name. I will not speak or think of him. So let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. That, that was perfect. Let's move on. What do you remember most about when you were young, Freddie? Like growing up, like before we knew you, you know, that, that spunky, vivacious, black boy joy Teenager, early twenties guy in Paris is burning. Oh, the early twenties. Okay, like as a kid. No, but what were you like as a kid? Like, what was your childhood like? Oh, I was energetic. I was energetic to the point I believe it was it. headache inducing. <laughs> I was so energetic; it was headache inducing. My mother was happy. Let's look like this. I did a two-hour train ride to high school and junior high school. No, high. Yeah, a uh, one one hour going and one hour coming back. So it was two hours a day ride to school, right? Where'd you go? Um, well, I went, the, the junior high was in the Bronx, John Philip Sousa, like on 100, okay. 241st Street around that area. Mm -hmm. Then the high school Shout out was, to them. Shout out to 241st Street. That's like damn near Mount Vernon. Shout out to those folks. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is it? Then I went to Graphic Communication Arts, which became the high school of um, sports Sports medicine management. It's sports okay. management and medicine. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's I try cool. to keep up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what, so you were energetic. So you were very. Do you remember a time? Excuse me. Do you remember like a time in childhood where like you just did something that was just so outrageous? And 
I don't know. It's like one of those moments that, that, that everybody talks about now, still. Can you remember anything from back then? What did I do? Yeah. Oh, I, well, no. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Like no pranks or anything? No, no, Freddie, no Freddie pranks? Well, as far as it goes, stealing a couple of bolts of material don't count. Um... Listen, I think cleaning you out, cleaning out, <laughs> cleaning out a couple of department stores, um, sewing materials. Don't wait a minute, not at not wait, not at eight, nine, ten. Oh, no, 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 doing no. that. You said you said teenager. I'm t- no, you I said, said before then, oh, I said before okay. that guy, okay, right? Because oh, we're going to get to that, that guy in a moment. No, no, okay, fine. that was when, okay, and this is the only one that my brother can talk about. My oldest brother. Okay. We went to a movie. We went to see Superfly, All right? right. The original yes. Superfly in the seventies uh-huh. back then. So we went to see the movie. Freddie's Dead comes on, right? Mm-hmm. The song Freddie's Dead by Curtis Mayfield. Yes. I'm sitting there crying <laughs> tears, boo hooing, and ever since then they said Freddie, 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 and that was my nickname. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Yeah. So yeah, that that was the uh, one thing they talk about about back then. Other than that, really don't have anything about me. I tried. Uh, to... What were your parents like? Like the, you know, growing up and in, in even because um, I do remember you know your mother. I remember you know um, rest in peace to her. I do remember um, that situation. But what were they like yeah. when when you were growing up? Your parents. Well, my mother was like working person and. You know, trying to hustle to make sure she could keep food on the table for three, three mm-hmm. stupid dudes, and um, you know that was it. So and you're the middle, right? You're the middle all child, the working right? mothers out there who are busting a busting a hunt for you know more than one kid. <laughs> yeah, you were saying. No, I said you're the middle child, correct? Oh one. yes, definitely. You're yes, middle. oh, so I'm the middle one. You, you, you're like. <laughs> Everything I know about you now makes so much sense because the middle child is the one who just like a lot of my friends are middle children and they just have to like, how do I say it? Perform. You have to man up for life. They, they have to perform. I'm thinking of one in particular. Shout out to Kai Trell. Um, Kai Trell, a.k.a. Do. Um, I hope he watches this. But Do is a middle child. Yeah. And even to this day, at 24, 25, however old he is, Do will come into a room and say, hey, y'all, my boyfriend about to take me to Africa. And we're like, dude, shut the fuck up. We're trying to watch TV. Like, he just <laughs> will come into a room and just podcast and perform. Like, he's just very extra. But I love Do. Do. I love Do. See, that's Everybody the reason why. Too, I, I even said it. I'm out there. I said, oh, he's so young and sweet and stupid. Yeah. Uh-huh. Dude. Yeah. He's, he's a darling. Well, here's the thing, because mm-hmm. we're talking about, you know, being younger, growing up. What did you know? Like, I, I liked... I, I was so I have a guest on who's, you know, mm-hmm. queer or of queer experience. I asked him, like, what did you know? What did I... What do you mean, what did I know? When did you know? Like, when did you know that you weren't uh, heterosexual? Uh, like, when did uh, you know? Oh, oh. Eight years old. Okay. Eight years old, um... All these girls, 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 and I was bored. Then I was looking at the friend that out, who lived down the block, who was cute as hell to me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, no, no. Oh, you want to have a birthday party? I'll invite all your friends. No, nah, just invite him. We good. Just invite him. Oh, he can't. Make- all right, oh. then cool. We ain't having no party. Bye. That's it. It was that big. This is the only one you wanted. You just wanted him. Thank you. I, See, I kept it basic. I was a little more strategic because I'd be like, okay, yeah, I want somebody to come to my party, but I, I wanted, you know, the specific person I was interested in to be there too. So, you know. I'm sorry. I didn't have all that time for all that shit. I know. You <laughs> Young, to I was cut like, straight to the I'm, chase. Just, let's cut through the chase. Yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank so, you. now, mm. let's let's go up a little, little further. Let's go move a little bit more forward in time. Mm-hmm took you to the pier because everybody has a pier story of like who took them there and you know the first time they went what they saw (laughs) do you remember it was david kim 
Israel Pendoff. Now I said his full legal name because mm. some people have actually insulted me by saying that he's a trans and he was never that. Okay. <laughs> David Kim Israel was a man. One hundred percent born a man, died a man, and that's it. He took me there. That was okay. simple. What do you remember about you know your first time going out there? It was unbelievable. Everybody was like, "Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Yeah. Hey, Miss Thing. Hey, girl. What's good?" You know, <laughs> and it was like. Friends and family all mixed together. It was like mm -hmm. family union. It was like, you know, you got off work. That's the that's where you went, definitely. And um, it was so connected and so wonderful in the sense where, I mean, if you didn't eat, you weren't home in a couple of days, up, oh, you went to the pier. Because you knew something was going to feed you. You knew you were going to get a place to stay. At least lay down, whatever. It was just so welcoming, so warm, so understanding, and so shady. <laughs> and so... We definitely got to talk about the shady part. Definitely. I mean, don't I know it? I just remember in, in just my own personal <laughs> story, and then I'll move on. I just remember it just being a place where people would just come up to you and just everybody was just very just interested. Open. Yeah. Yes. And that's what I really, you know, liked about it. And this is not the pier that the kids know today that's all fancy and it's got sprinklers. No, this is the pier that was like, mm -hmm. you know, a salt mine. Broken down. Right. Had, oh, uh, you know, you could, you could, listen, it had holes in the floor where you could see the water. Mm -hmm. You could see the water. Yeah. You have to walk carefully, and that's yeah. it. You know, that's it. I'm old enough to remember that. I was very young, but I'm still old enough to remember that. <laughs> remember mm -hmm. that. Um, but now, your time out there, this was definitely in the, the era before, like all the social media, all the camera phones, all of it. Did you see any famous people out there? Like who are famous now? Do you remember seeing... Uh-oh. I know what that face means. I know what that face means. Okay. What we'll do is we'll do like a little blind eye. No, we won't. Give me a little hint. No, we won't. Give me a little no, hint. We a little hint with mine. No, we will not. No, we won't. Well, what I will say is... I, let's put it like this. I okay. have been always known as being a secret keeper. I've always kept that. Okay. I respect that. You know, if it's, if it's a secret, if it's supposed to be secret... Fine, I will keep it until the day I die. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that I'm writing them up for <laughs> after I die, that's what you got to work with, okay? <laughs> well, just make sure that you tell me the, the code to this lockbox. <laughs> I'll send for you after. Okay, yes. I'll send you sure. <laughs> But, you know, what, what's interesting is um, I heard a story, and this is just like a little folklore, that years ago, Queen Latifah, who we, we all love Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah and Michael K. Williams, rest in peace to Michael. He was the guy, he played um, Omar on The Wire. Um, gorgeous actor, uh, dark skin. He had the buck 50, um, you know, the, the scar on his face. Um, he used to walk balls in Vogue as Mike Ebony. He was actually in Ebony. He walked balls. Um, Queen actually introduced him to Madonna. And he became a dancer. He was in a um, hundred percent pure love video, Crystal Waters. Um, and Ebony at the time, just and I'm not insinuating anything about him, but Ebony at the time was just like the premier black house. Like they were just pulling people from everywhere. It seemed like. Oh yes, but they were left, But you had to have something very yes. special about yes. your look overall to be an Ebony. To be an Ebony. I'm gonna get to Ebony, Ebony. later. I'm gonna get because to, there's there's something um, I learned because you know I do my research. I do my research. I, you know, take a lot of notes. Like, mm -hmm. I, let me show you my notepad real quick. The people who are listening <laughs> to the podcast, they're not going to be able to see, see this, but this is my notepad. Ooh, it God. looks like just like I'm, it looks like I'm You're doing filled. psychic <laughs> writing or something like that. 
that's what it looks like. But um, but listen, um, yeah, because we're gonna take a break and then we'll come back. Um, yes. let's talk about Pendulums, the legendary house of Pendulums. How did you become a Pendulums? It was kind of funny because um, we were in Kim's house. I was living, I was living there, and um, everyone was shouting out, "Oh, I'm from this house! I'm from this house! I'm from this house!" Then they looked at me. They said, what house are you from? And Kim looked, Kim looked at them and said, but you should automatically, you know, he lives here. He's a Pendarvis. Anybody who lives here is a Pendarvis because I'm a Pendarvis here. And everybody said, oh, okay. And that, that was it. But it was funny because Kim had already called Avis and talked to her about me. And, mm-hmm. she, and she said, next time he comes to a ball, let me let me meet him. And that was it. So. I love that. that what, do you know when that was? Like, what year was that about? I was born in 87, let's see, I say 45. Okay. Yeah. Back when a lot of us were just dirty thoughts in our daddy's drawers. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) So let's talk about Paris's burning. Let's get into that. I I really want to know um, how that came about. I've heard different stories from different people throughout the years, but I want to hear from you, I, w- I want you to, to, to tell me. Um, well, Jenny was in, in like going through, going to multiple balls, and um, she had a camera and everything else. And Avis had told us, you know, avoid the camera for a simple fact and reason. This white bitch is going to be like so many other white people who come in and, you know, get the film and, you know, make children think something and then use them and manipulate them you see it somewhere else and they got the credit and they get the money and everything else which pretty much happened but um yeah. as far as it goes it you know she wasn't the only one to get money we mm-hmm. did get a little bit and that's it right. so you know um kim avoided it for a while and she talked to him like three four times there's you know a couple of good clips of Kim but then there's so much more footage she had of him you know um, in the ball and it just did make the cut and that's it um, I can't say pretty much more than that and you know she came to the house filmed us and that was it because it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's been said that there were hundreds of hours of, of just, you know, footage and, and, and audio yes. because, um, listen here, kids, this is for all the kids out here who videotape and record and, and, you know, film. Back in the day, you had a camera for video and you had a recorder for audio and you had to make sure that everything was synced up. And that's just how things were. So it's been said that there were hours and hours of just footage and audio that were just left on the cutting room floor. Because, Definitely. I mean, the film is only an hour and maybe like five, six, seven, eight minutes, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so I want to know, though, because <clears throat> now, now this is something different. I've heard so many conflicting stories um, about? about the origin of Ball. So what is the true origin of war? Because I, I heard I, it honest, started at the French I, I Revolution, it started at the Harlem Renaissance, it was right in the 70s, I don't know. I, I, I can't even answer that okay. because um, so many people you know, have so many stories. Right. And so many of the stories can be both wrong, wrong and right because of the time periods, you know, and because, you know, just like now, balls are popular everybody's doing then there may come a time when everybody stops doing them and it's like very quiet and everything else and then it comes up again and then so that's the reason why i cannot answer that and i can say the stories may be right and may be wrong no i mean you know and it's kind of like what we talked about earlier with how you you know you learned the origin of your name you know sometimes it's best to just go with the story that you've been told as opposed to someone doing all this research, finding out what it is, and then you're like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. (laughs) That's not what I wanted to hear. Right, yeah. You know? So, okay. 
I'll, I'll listen. I'll take that. Um, now, here's the thing, though, with Pendavis. I Googled Pendavis years ago because I wanted to know what the origin of the name was. And all I get really is like your pictures of you and your beautiful face. I'm not complaining about that. Okay, thank you. Where did, that, <laughs> well, where did that name come from? Was it someone's last name? Was it like a designer that just didn't? An African dove. Oh, please. Just, I'm just gobsmacked. That just totally just. <laughs> and then you know what? And, and now that's the perfect example of what we just talked about finding the origin of things. Now that's beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Well, I, I, I thought it was African dog all day, you know, every day. Dog, African dog. And I said, I mean, because. You know, somebody else in the house, Jamal, shout out to Jamal, you in, you in, uh, you still in Atlanta, God help you. So he's the one who really like did the research on it. And he said, you know, the dog means African dove. And I was like, really? Okay, cool. Good girl. You research. Hey, shout out to <laughs> Jamal. I'll take it. I, that's, Thank you. that's wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. This is random. As, like, so sometimes I get these random thoughts and I'm like, who doesn't? Do. Please tell me. Exactly. Who, who doesn't? And I'll say, I said, you know, somebody needs to do like an ancestry DNA type family tree on okay. all of the houses. Not so much really? ancestry, but but do you get what I'm saying? Like, do like a family yeah. tree, like that would be just. But though people jump from houses to houses so much, I it's know. like you know, come on now, you know, and, and then there's so much incest in certain houses. But you know. Oh, listen, I, mean, okay. I have this thing about incest, right? Mm. Where if it actually, if it happened to me, I would have a different take on it. Right. But because of my, the way my mother brought me up, my grandmother, my great aunt and all of them, you know, I don't play with that. Yeah. No. I don't play with that. I feel you. And so, you know, yeah, somebody no. else, if you do it, cool, don't let me know about it because then I'm gonna, I'm gonna start side eyeing you, you know. Like, I'm just really? gonna say this I'll say this if you do it, and I know that you do it as a mandated reporter, I'm reporting your ass. That's what I the mean, fuck I'm doing. I, ha I haven't, I, ha I mean, let's look like this. I only did three semesters of my master's, in four, but I'm not a mandated reporter. So I don't know how to, I can report you, but I won't. But I will give you one warning and I will stop talking to you. Now there is someone that I know who, who doesn't do incest, but they do play with kids too much in a sexual way for me. And I stop talking to them and they live in New York City in the Bronx. So, and I'm not mentioning their name, which starts with a T. And that's it. Oh, they that's know who they are. Go. They know who they are. They know and you, and you know what? And they'll get caught because they're going to fuck with the wrong one. And we, yes. And when it happens, that's the it. Wrong no, one. no, no. But they'll see, let's be like this. There are those who don't get caught and they do certain things. And I'm not going to say no names, but mm -hmm. I do know because let's put it like this God bless the dead. Hector Extravaganza sent mm -hmm. me the texts about somebody doing these things and everything else. So, God bless Hector Soul. And God, the conversations God bless that let me know this person's wrongdoings and everything else. So as far as it goes, I'm going to leave that alone. But Friend, like I said, that's a perfect I'm place to put a pin in this. We're going to take a quick break. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are good. Look at that. We we got a costume change. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have time to do a costume change. I had to figure out what was going on with my credit card. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, that Cash App is uh, Chris NYC on Cash App. Freddie, do you have a Cash App you'd like to share with the class? Uh, cash App? Uh, well, I, I can't even remember my Cash App. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll give you time to look for it because this isn't going up right away. But um, I'll give you time to look for it that way. Um, you know, people can, you know, donate and contribute if if they wish. Oh. 
if they yes, wish. if they wish. Okay. If they wish. We All never right. we never force people to do anything. Right. We we don't force people. We just you know if if they feel compelled to then, be generous, yes. then uh huh, be generous. That's it. So welcome back, everybody. We're back at here at the Chris David Show with Freddie Pendavis. Um, I saw a post the other day on the AIDS memorial page. And it was from uh, yes. Luna, Luna Ortiz. And uh, shout out to Luna. Luna yeah. is just Luna Lens on uh, Instagram. Luna is, is such a... Listen. You know Luna is a pandemic, right? Luna, I know, I know. And, and so, so yeah. but, Luna but Luna is just wonderful. We had to go to Luna's, Luna's graduation. Oh. We were forced to go to Luna's graduation, high school graduation. Avis made sure that we went to Luna's graduation. And that's one thing that makes Pendarvis different from every house. Because when we had a mother of the house who said there'll be no other than her, she made sure we gathered for things like graduations. So that then every year, even if it was like three or four of us, we was like, and there were three or four of us graduating, it was like, oh, you go, you three go to this one graduation, you three go to this graduation, you three go to this graduation, I'm gonna go to this one's graduation. But we all were going to graduations. And to see, that's see what family does. Thing, you know? That's family. That's family. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Well, definitely. The post was memorializing Avis. That's, that's what I was getting at. And, and I wanted to know, because that was a great story that you just gave me. But what do you remember about Avis? Avis, by the way, was the, the mother of the House of Bendavis. Avis was uh, the same sign as me and shady as hell. Real, oh, I would have loved Avis. Hell. See, she <laughs> loved people so much. That's where her shade came from, from love. Because she reads you down so that then she could take you by the hand and move you and, and you. inspire you and everything else. Because yeah. that's like this. When Avis was in the hospital, when she was, you know, on was going her through her things, it was like she had a speaker for, a speaker next to her her bed and she had four doctors calling in and you went to the nurses, you went to find, to, to go through it, and they said, are you here for the patient? And da, da 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 They knew her room by heart, because so many people were coming. They said, is she famous? Is she famous? She's famous. Yeah. Trust me, she's famous. I mean, she's listen, famous. Ava showed her goddamn ass. It was like four, she had four doctors out of state who were Pendavises, who'd graduated and became doctors, checking on her condition then she had her two doctors here who were answering to other two doctors in other hospitals around the state eight fucking doctors and most of them six of them were house members that's amazing you know what i'm glad you brought that up because that's going to be something i talk about a little bit later i'm going to education gonna, in the oh yeah we're going to we're going to go back to that mm -hmm. i got a good one for you though that's I know you have the memory of an elephant, and look at you up there. You have one Delta Sigma Theta Red. Shout out to all the Deltas, but you have the memory of an elephant. And I want to know. Here's what I want to know. What? Tell me about the night that Paris is Burning premiered. What do you remember about that night? Okay, Kim made a joke. There goes that queen again, in which she was talking about me. And which, that was the funniest thing. That was the thing, that's the thing that stands out in my mind. Because after Kim said it one time, then somebody else said it another time. Then the third time, everybody's saying it. Everybody's like, she out now. There goes that queen again. And I'm like, oh my God. Listen, i never get over that. I'll never get over that. That was hard. That was so funny that night. That night was crazy. And the original pre premiere was in um, NYU, which I had, a, a, you know, I, I found out after I went, after I'd already gotten to, into school and I like, graduated that I could have went to NYU. Mm, shout out to NYU. But um, I went to college. Don't Michigan, shout them and out. Was the last one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You, you went no, there. no, we don't have any issues with NYU. Shout out to NYU. Shout out to Tisch School. Um, but also shout out to Columbia. And shout oh, out I, I I tried for Columbia, but I'm sorry, they too expensive for me. Shit, your mother paid an arm, a leg, three. Ass My mother ass. ain't pay nothing. Listen, Ooh. I'm still trying to pay them. Anyway, shout out to Columbia. Ooh. I'm still trying to play, pay your asses back. What? 
There goes that. So, the, it, do you remember what you wore to the premiere? Do you remember what you had on? Because I know, I know your fashion sense, and you do it all. I grew a lot. I grew a lot <laughs> in fashion. But um, <laughs> as far as it goes, I had. I think I had on. It was summertime. I had on jeans. I had on sneakers. Um, it was it was very that jeans, sneakers, light. I, I think I had a linen shirt, jeans, and um, yeah, linen shirt, jeans, and some sandals. Because Kim didn't Kim didn't want it any other way. That's what we were. That's what speaking we were of wearing. Kim, speaking of clothes, speaking of Kim, we got to talk about that tank top scene. About it taking Kim. <laughs> You're so silly. And so our, silly. Let me tell you, I'll tell you something. Me and my cousin, me and my cousin, he's a little bit younger than me. We were little kids watching this movie, by the way. It would come on once a year, it would come on Sundays. And he's he's not queer, he's he's hetero. But I could call him up right now and say, How long did it take you to do the tank top? And he'd say, Power. And I'd say, Well, that is not your speed. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me about Kim, that tank let's top team. Kim came from a family of sewers. Kim's okay. mother sewed, his father sewed. His father was Jewish. He was actually Jewish. Oh, wow. So he, he could sew his ass off from curtains, bedspreads, um, clothes, everything. You name it, he would do it. But he was taking his time on this tank top. And I was like, how long? What? You, you don't take that long on a tank top, I know. Because, I, let's put it like this. I used to be asleep. I used to come in from partying at Better Days. God bless the dead. Oh, Better Days. That was, the, that was the legendary club beside the garage. Anyway, I came in from Better Days one day. And Kim didn't go out. So everybody's asking, where's Kim? Where's Kim? I said, you'll see him soon enough. He's making an outfit. I went to lay down. Bang! I'm like, oh my God! Listen, I know I died. I had to have died to be slapped like that. I woke up. Kim's walking around in this outfit saying, bitch, I want to show you. I said, oh, God damn, well, just, just let me go to sleep. Just, just let me die first, then let me wake up again. Please. Okay? But he always had the most fashionable, wonderful outfits. One of his outfits got him out of trouble. Oh. Because. Okay. This is the incident that started the lock on the stock. Okay. Now, what happened was this. Kim was out. He had a beautiful outfit, you know, at the time, be looking, you know, femme being masculine was a thing. Uh, he had a, you know, a bag he made, the whole outfit, the pants, the tank top, the jacket, everything he made. Everyone's complimenting him, complimenting him. Then this one queen said, oh, no, no. he started beefing with him. He said, listen, Miss Thing, I'm getting my life. I'm, get, I'm getting my compliments. I don't know why you're giving it to me and everything else. He said, I'm going to leave you alone. Turned around and walked away. Kid kept, blah, 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 blah. the mouth is going. He's asking for it. He said, Miss Thing, I'm going to leave you alone. So a few minutes before this, a person who was he had, a, he had a beautiful heart okay that's all I'm gonna say he had a beautiful heart even though he knocked somebody out threw him in a cab took him home fucked him then threw him out of his house and told him get oh, to the club I know who gone. this person is I alright alright okay. okay I wanted you to get the you know, I want you to get him okay yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about Right, him. No, and it, it, there were five of those type people around, so hopefully you get the right one. There were five of those people around, so hopefully you get the right one. <clears throat> he wasn't very tall. He wasn't the tall one out of the group. Okay. Okay. That's that. Anyway, he um he handed Kim a lock because he's seen it on the street. He said, oh, I'm a He handed Kim a lock. Kim put the lock in his bag. He said, he said, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to knock you out. He said, pop! Woo! 
Not to keep it locked. He had socks that, you know, like knee highs. He had knee highs in that day with, you know, sandals. So he ran to the cops. Kim gave the lock to the child, told the child, go ahead, I'll meet you at home or whatever. The cop came up to me. He said, hi, officer, how are you? He, you can look at my bag. I have nothing. <laughs> you know, and he played it off. And he, the cop was telling him, yeah, outfit is fly. I like that outfit. The cop wanted to have Kim. But, <laughs> so, Kim's outfit got him out of trouble then. Mm. But, <laughs> other than that, like, if it happened now, trust me, oh. the cop would have been like, oh, shut the fuck up, let's go. <laughs> shut the fuck up, let's go. Shout out That's to it. our cops. The good ones. Even though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Listen, this is a brand new show. I'm not trying to get canceled. This is a brand new show. Listen, I yeah. You we talk. We talk, you and I. But yes, we what do. Was, what was so what was life like after Paris's birth? For you, your friends. Um Well, uh, for for most of my friends, know. they they really didn't care. They they pretty much didn't care. They you know, they knew me, so they they were like mm -hmm. whatever. Um people I would meet sometimes would make me feel funny. One woman funny how in the sub. I'm, I'm explaining. One woman okay. came. I didn't know this woman from now nowhere. She came to me. She sat down right next to me and said, "Hi, how are you? I feel like I know you." And I was like, "Same expression you have." I Strange had that danger. Moment. And then she said, "Then she said, um, you know, um, Paris burning." I said, okay, yeah. But still stranger danger mm -hmm. because she didn't identify herself. Mm -hmm. If anything, she could have just, hi, how are you? Stabbed me and everything else. I mean, right. anything could have happened. I had, there was this guy I got interested in. His name's, if I could shoot him with a gun, I would blow his brains out in the middle of Times Square with the president of the United States across the street to identify him. What did he do? Okay. What did he do? Okay. This one, you know, he's the type to manipulate a person. Okay. Oh, I don't have this. Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Can you help me out here? I'll give it back to you. Or, and then he gives it back to you. He needs it again for something else, something else. It's always something. And so after being manipulated by him for a while, I decided I'm done. But lo and behold, he was dating somebody else. And at the time, he was working for the police department. At the time, the other person was working for the corrections department. So he, quote unquote, from what I heard, lost his job mm -hmm. and in the police department. But, you know, it is what it is. It is. Let's move on before we start calling out people. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. So hip hop turns fifty this year. I think it turns fifty. I want to say they they say um, August eleventh, nineteen seventy three was the birth date of hip hop on um, uh, in 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 the basement. Um, I can't remember the street in the Bronx, but um, they put a museum up, everything. And and what I've noticed in just all of my studies and. Um, you know, just just in studying just just culture and society, black culture in general, we have so many parallels and so many intersections. It's like it, it's kind of like if people from Philly know this street I'm talking about, Old York Road. Old York Road runs like this. Broad Street runs straight. So it's just like Old York Road, you know, they run parallel, then they cross and then they stray and then they wait, 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 wait. I just said something. I'm going to come back to this because I'm going somewhere with this, but I'm going to come back to this. Speaking of Stray, you were in a movie many, many years ago. Yes. With Stray. Donnell Williams and Vin Diesel. Yes. Which is on Amazon Prime. If you guys have Amazon Prime, Stray's is on yes, Amazon Prime. Yes. And that was Vin's first film, wasn't it? Wasn't it his first movie? Yes, it was. His first film and it went to Cannes. So I was... See... People don't understand and know that I'm. I've this been is this in, history right here, folks. Like you're not going to get this anywhere. This is 
Sister. This I've been in a documentary. I've been in a movie. I've been in a TV show. And I've been on Broadway. So I've done all my stuff that I need to do as far as artistry and acting. And now you're on the Chris Davis show. Actually, so you're going, you, you know, this is, yeah, you, you could yeah, possibly be an ego. <laughs> Oscar, I, Tony, we right just got to get you, we got to get that album out. It was. Oh, we got to call MC Deborah and get her on the beat machine. And we got to get <laughs> Trap Freddy going. I'm serious. <laughs> and we can get that ego. But, but wait, wait, wait. wait let's talk this. about let's talk about the streak. So how did how did you even get involved with that? It's funny. Okay, um, I was um, introduced to a cameraman on the set, and the cameraman said, "Well, why don't you come in and you know do this little? It's a little part, right? Mm -hmm. um, the the role is Arthur. You're going to be um, you know Darnell Williams' friend and everything else, and he's you know he's an actor. He's he's making it and everything else. And I was trying to make it." I had an actual agent at the time, but you ready to hear this? The agent wanted to have the other dude who just started on soap operas and he wanted to have sex with him. And the guy who was on, sex, on soap operas and acting and everything else, he was straight. And he had a little girlfriend with him. So, boom. And me, the gay person, got kicked down and pushed to the side and everything else. And the funny thing about this, when I was on the set of Pose, Mr. Ryan Murphy said, you've been in the business 30 years. Wait a minute. Freddie froze. Freddie froze, you guys. Oh, no.